cleanliness out of my cleanliness I check. Um, the, the point um, uh, <coughs> I would like also to draw your attention to is um, in fact we have dealt with this question, I must go to the next question. Um, this issue of judges calling for press conferences to answer matters that uh, they find uh, objectionable. Perhaps I, if, if you don't feel comfortable with that question, because I think I will deal with, with other candidates, you can, tell, you, you can say so. But my point is, the calling of press conferences by judges to respond to political rhetorics and statements which they perceive to be attacks and criticism, how would you respond to it, if, if you can? Um, I attempted, Commissioner, to deal uh, fairly at length with the... Uh, oh, 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 yeah, well, I guess you are, you are teasing out just the question of a press conference yes. now, specifically. Yes. Um, I think I actually did allude to that question when I said, yes, the one approach could be the one of approaching the two leaders of the two arms of state um, approaching each other and talking. And then I said, on some learning that I have had the advantage of going through, a point is made, and I think I do share it, a point is made that there may be times as, uh, uh, there may be times when somebody who is at a certain level within the judiciary, and that for me speaks to the leader of the judiciary, may have to respond. Take a situation, for example, where you try to reach out to the leader of the other arm of state, and you see that things are going exactly the way that, that Justice Mohammed says they shouldn't go, exactly the way that uh, Justice Krifler in Mamabulo warns against. And then you try to reach out to the leader of the other arm of state, and you are met with resistance, or, or um, the leader just says, I will not see you at all. Or if they see you, they say, there's nothing I'm going to do about that. What do you do? Do you then throw your hands up in the air and do nothing and let the public be believe whatever they want to believe in an instance where something does have to be done? But I want to emphasize, and I did say this before, I am by no means advocating a situation where day in and day out we would be running to the media, not at all. But there will be, and it is quite conceivable, there will be the odd occasions when that may be necessary. This is my last question now. The question is only on this. You have exceeded your Wait, time allocation oh, oh, by I, 10 I, minutes already. Oh, I, it says that I thought it's only the 10th minute now. Can I with your leave just ask please, this question? Please pose your question, question. Uh, Commissioner thank, Nikis. Thank, thank you, President. Thank you. I, I just want this question because this question on transformation has been asked by everyone. Would you agree with me that in this country, blacks and, sorry, banks and big business, they are advocating for, for racism. They hate black practitioners. Would I be correct to make that conclusion that big banks, business, actually advocate for, for, I mean, for racism? Because they are the people who don't want to brief black practitioners and women. In all their cases, you can take from at the SCA Constitutional Court if the case that involves them. They simply don't brief black practitioners and black women. Mm. Is that not racism? Me, or how best we can describe it? 
Commissioner, Commissioner no Jesse. The, the reality, the reality is is that I, I did say take Mtata for example. There are banks there as well. There were banks, and I think the only bank that briefed uh, black people was what was on York Road. Yes, TNBS, um, and then the the, the the big banks did did not. Um, so the reality is that uh, I mean, uh, whatever tag you want to give it, they 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 obviously one prefer to take the work, to take their money to people who look that, like them, and look like them. That is uh, who owns the banks. Um, that is the that is the reality. Of, 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 of our situation and it explains why yes there was a little bit of commercial work in Mtata it explains why I was, uh, I was never, never exposed to that and it can only be on the basis that those who have the money and preponderantly in South Africa it is white people those who have the money will take their money to, 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 to their own people Thank you very much, Chairperson. Largely, largely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, yeah. Commissioner Nakesi. <clears throat> Commissioner Klaba. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Acting uh, President, and uh, good afternoon, uh, Justice Malanga. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, <clears throat> I, I just want to go back to the question that um, Judge President Le uh, Taletsi raised earlier on and uh, also touched on by uh, my colleague uh, who just came before me. But I want to broaden it. Uh, <clears throat> It's, it's, it's the traditional approach to um, the traditional approach that says that um, uh, judges speak through their judgments um, <clears throat> in the context where there is now a temptation by some within the judiciary uh, to contribute to the um, ongoing uh, debates under the rubric of uh, freedom of uh, speech. And um, <coughs> what is your take on that? Um, uh, Commissioner, I have attempted to deal with uh, that one at, at, at length at the beginning and I think there was also a follow-up question on it. I'm, I'm not trying to duck it and, and then again uh, Commissioner um, uh, no, Jesse engaged me quite extensively on, 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 on it. I, I don't think I have anything to add uh, really. Uh, with your respect uh, Justice, yes. I, I thought yes. that was confined only to press uh, statements. Oh, yeah. Um, press statements. I'm just talking generally. Yes. The principle that judges speak through their judgments and the temptation uh, of uh, senior judges to contribute uh, uh, to the uh, issues of the day. Yeah. I, no, just it, no, it, it, yeah, the, I hear you now, Commissioner. My apologies. My apologies. Um, <clears throat> To that one, I would say, Commissioner, um, the issues that I say may actually call for a response from the judiciary, um, and which, and on which I said, the approach or possible approaches are two pronged. 
um, sometimes do not relate to court going matters. So there will be at times there will be no judgment to speak through as it were. Yes, sometimes criticism may come up as a result of a judgment that we may have given. And uh, in those instances, I, I, I do not see why a judge would want to go uh, speak and try to say, no, actually, this is what I meant and why. Because it's in the, judge, it's in the judgment itself. But there are those instances where um, the criticisms, um, the minister added attack or attack, no, 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 may, be, may be relating to issues that have nothing to do with judgments. No, no, the, so, sorry, yes. just, to has, uh, just to assist uh, uh, Justice, yes. I, I'm just talking it in general. Uh, please don't confine it to the attacks. Is judges wanting uh, um, judges entering into a political discussion to to an extent, in some cases, of contradicting government policy or policy of the country? May, may I? I think now I get the idea. I get an idea of what you are probably alluding to. May I ask to duck that question and put it no higher than the level of principle which I think I have already addressed because, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, because what I think you are alluding to is something that I think is a litigious matter. And as a sitting judge, I would prefer not to speak to it. So I am quite comfortable addressing issues in general terms, and I think I have tried the best I can to do that. But, but let me say this. Let me say this. The code of conduct, the code of conduct, and I thought I did touch on this earlier, when, 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 when uh, was it Justice Khaled was, uh, was, was uh, asking me, uh, the code of conduct does say judges should not involve themselves in political controversies. The code of conduct does say that. And you will remember, Commissioner, that is when I then made the lengthy attempt at explaining how we nonetheless will still get involved in political issues, but in the process of the adjudicative process. And then I said, I did say that, but once you stray outside of the adjudicative process and meddle in political matters, that's when you may then transgress the code of conduct. I did say that. I am willing to stand by that, that I will not duck. But it, it was more the, <laughs> a feeling that you may be alluding to something specific, and uh, which is something litigious that I say perhaps is I, I, I hope at least at the level of principle, yes, 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 we should not meddle in political controversy. I say that categor categorically. Thank, thank you very much, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, Judge, yes. you've uh, answered me. Uh, <clears throat> you, you are selling us a vision, and uh, you further state that um, the, the period remaining uh, in the bench mm -hmm. does not count against you being appointed uh, to the position for which you have applied, the position of Chief Justice. Now, don't you think that... Um, the, 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 the short term uh, uh, will make your vision a nearly impossible uh, fit uh, and, and two may not contribute much to the stability of the court. I'm sorry that I have to belabor, belabor the point, 
But I thought I should raise this as a parting shot yeah. because it will exercise the mind, the minds of the uh, uh, commissioners. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I, 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 I will uh, also, in a sense, be, be belaboring <laughs> my, 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 my response. Um, I, I gave the, the example of me acting as a judge president for, I think, was it about a year? And within that year, bringing in, in innovations, and I gave you a tangible example of what I came up with, with tangible results, a year. Um, I also gave the example of somebody that is well known to this august body. I'm sure, I mean, if I sat down, scratch my head hard enough, I could easily come up with more. And I gave the example of, uh, of, of Judge President Beninga, who within a year was able, I, I, I will not say that uh, the Eastern Cape Division was a horribly performing court, no, but he took it from whatever level it was at and took it high up to one of the better performing divisions in the country, again within a year. And I think some of the results of that are quite visible even to this august uh, uh, body. And uh, I hope I will not cause resistance for him in future when he comes here, because uh, he and I are quite close. And I do know, I do know that uh, by and large, he even manages in this august body to 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 one he, 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 he is able because of how he can identify talent make or of course it's the minister who makes the appointments recommend appointments and then have people acting he is able to bring to this august body the sort of talent that by and large this august body has found acceptable. But that's just one facet. That's just one facet. Overall, he has made that division one of the better performing divisions and he did that within a year. So three years, I repeat, Categorically, Commissioner, three years is a very long time. The entity that I said I ran, and I quoted from you, the very laudatory, the very praiseworthy um, um, words by uh, Deputy Minister um, Jabumulekedi about how I led that entity. That was what, it was around three years starting it from an empty floor. Three years, I repeat. And, and if I could rattle off the figures, we are talking tens and tens of billions of rand that were exposed to the country, increased the tax base, and so on and so on, within a few years. Now, let me quickly... Uh, Please forgive me, uh, uh, Acting President. Let me also say something that I think, without at all suggesting that people who have longer terms, for example, uh, colleagues coming in would have 12 years as Chief Justice. If, if at the level of principle or policy, whatever tag may be given to it, it were ever to be said, for somebody to be appointed Chief Justice when they are left with only three years, six months, at the level of principle, that should not be done. That would send a very bad message. It would mean that senior judges at the Constitutional Court should forget about ever becoming Chief Justice. Somebody coming in having 12 years, even people who would come in, say, two, three years after the Chief Justice who has 12 years, 
and then the chief justice leaves. They would be, those people would be the most senior at the court when the chief justice leaves. The chief justice was there for 12 years. They will be the most senior and they will be in exactly the position in which I am here today and they will be told that you are left with only three years. Forget about ever becoming chief justice. That would send a bad, bad message. By saying that I should not be misunderstood, I am not saying that somebody should not be appointed from another court and if they are of a young age and therefore can serve the 12 years, should not come in and serve the 12 years as Chief Justice. I am not saying that. All that I am arguing against is an idea that Three years, six months is all that is left for you. Forget about it. That will send out a very terrible message. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, follow up. Uh, Justice Mazanga. Follow up on that. Uh, uh, I'll defer to you, otherwise, I had a follow up. Uh, okay. No, it's just on that uh, point. I hear Justice uh, Mazango, you are emphasizing three years. But I'll want to read that you don't really mean three years. You mean that six months, two days, two years. It doesn't matter. In my, One year. No, yeah. no, no, no. Let's focus on my three years, six months, uh, Minister, please. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I think it is to accept that, you know, some of the changes or innovations you might wish to introduce, especially uh, momentous. You know, we have to go through, you know, long pipelines because, uh, you know, to, to, to get to fruition because you would, for example, need to get a buy-in from across the board. Um, would you accept that as a general process? I would say that could easily apply to the Chief Justice Langa served. Uh, and uh, I mean, what's the difference? Uh, what much difference is there, uh, Acting President Pence, uh, between uh, three years, uh, six months, and, uh, and, uh, and, and four years? The difference is only six months. And uh, there was no problem at all with the Chief Justice Langa becoming Chief Justice. Um, but but, but uh, addressing the point of substance, the, the, those uh, problems that you allude to would, would really have to be uh, what close to insurmountable problems for, for them to, to take three years, uh, six months to resolve. Um, and uh, then I think that perhaps would more be a function of them not being seen as acceptable than a case of final, finality being reached on them. I, I hear you accept that former Chief Justice Lama was the only candidate uh, when he was there. <laughs> but, 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 but my, but my point stands. My point stands, though. My point stands. My point stands because the person who does the appointment should have said four years is a very short period. Somebody does the appointment, and if this is a factor, it should be a factor at all levels, not just with the JSC. It should be a factor um, with the person who does the appointment as well. Thank you, Justice Mazzano. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Acting Buff. President. Thank, thank you, thank you uh, Acting President. As just another follow-up. Justice Malang, I, I, I would like you to answer this question more on, on this issue of, of the 
of the term. Just as the issue of leadership earlier, which, as you correctly pointed out, was raised in the media as um, a, a drawback, yes, yes. which you've really dealt with effectively, I think. This is also a, a question of a similar nature. And I think you should take cue from the last remark of the acting president. I said earlier to you that although you are all senior judges and you are all collegial and all that, but bottom line, this is a competition, yes. right? So this time it's a competition. It's not just one judge sitting there as it usually is. Yes. There are other candidates and you must accept that when we ask you questions, we are mindful of the fact that there are other candidates. Yes, 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 <clears throat> and it's an opportunity for you to allay any fears that might be there. Let me try and explain it to you. It might well be that actually this is a, a neutral factor. But the reality is that some of the candidates will be able to serve for a longer period than you would if you were appointed. Yes. It's a fact. Yes. Um, and I think what the commissioners are trying to do is to give you an opportunity to convince us that's, that when we do deliberate, we should not overemphasize this factor as a disadvantage uh, in your case, just as we should not overemphasize the fact that you have not had an opportunity to lead a court permanently for a long time or for as long a time as the other candidates. So, the, 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 I would like you to deal with it frontally and um, explain to us why, for example, my own instinct would say, oh, well, if you're only left, let's use the minister's uh, example, with 18 months. That means in 18, 18 months' time, we must go through this again just, you know, as a country of selecting a chief justice. On the other hand, it might well be that if we have somebody who's going to serve for 10, 12 years, let's say in the first six months we realize that we made a mistake, <laughs> <laughs> then we're stuck <laughs> with, that, with that person. So it's, it's, it's a serious matter that must be confronted. It's a reality. Um, and, and we need to be convinced that it is not something that should be a game changer. I, I thank you, Commissioner Mbofu. I, I, I did not want to, to touch on the point you made uh, to, towards, my, towards the end. I did not want to make that point myself because it would sound uh, quite negative, but... Uh, <laughs> As you say, these two, aside of uh, the idea that I lack uh, leadership, these two is out there in the public domain, you know, but he's left well only. The six months is not even added. He's left only with three years. Uh, Sometimes it's even said two. <laughs> so, so, Commissioner, uh, I did think exactly what you just articulated, <laughs> articulated now, and there was no way I could articulate it and I thought, mm, but what if, you know, the person who will serve 12 years then does not prove to be what you wanted? Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not at all. I'm not, this is not at all casting not any saying it. aspersions against my colleagues, all of whom I respect, not at all. Uh, but uh, Commissioner Bofu, I, I may be repeating myself but I, 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 I want to say that I took the question with a seriousness that I believe it deserves. It may at that time not have been raised, or in fact, I mentioned uh, you know, my idea of the qualities of a leader in a different context. In fact, when I was exactly dealing with my leadership skills. I actually have those points on 
leadership skills. I have them under a flag here that says TAM. And I make the point that what a leader needs, again I say I'm repeating myself, but this is to show that I am taking it with a seriousness that you quite correctly say, you know, I should address it with. I say I disagree that the term is short. Leadership requires a visionary. Someone who can identify A, where an institution needs to be taken, B, problems, and be able to come up with solutions, and then Im implement immediately. But of course, as uh, the acti acting president uh, correctly points out, implementation may be impacted upon by the responses that you get. But for that to go to, to three years, uh, 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 my mind says that should be in respect of what perhaps may be found to be unacceptable. So if you have those qualities, you should be able, within a matter of days, months perhaps, and to the extent that I said if I am appointed, I will approach other heads of courts from the Supreme Court of Appeal to the District Court, get ideas from them as well. Once I have solicited or obtained all of that, reached decisions at the level of heads of courts, I will push for implementation immediately. This, this, this is all of this, Commissioner Mpofu, is something that can happen within a relatively short time. And if what you have identified under my A and B is something momentous, something concrete, and you are able to then create templates on it that should leave or, 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 or that should leave the judiciary with lasting templates to be used into the future, even by your successors. What is crucial is that initial stage, that identification process, both of where you want to go and also what problems do you identify and how do you solve them. That is the crucial stage. And then immediate implementation, immediate being relative in the sense that uh, who do you have to consult with? Um, and, 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 and those uh, in my book do not require years and years and years. I, I, I hope I have uh, answered you, Commissioner. You have. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Acting President, for the follow-up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Commissioner Mapisan. No, I, I want to make a follow-up. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Malema. Uh, yes, Justice you may proceed. Matlanga, you said something about the person who appointed would have made a consideration about three years and six months. I don't understand that comment. What do you mean by that? Oh, no, I was not uh, talking about my three years, six months. I, I made that point, uh, Commissioner, in the context of uh, it being put to me that uh, um, um, Commish, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Justice Langa was the, was the only, only candidate. So, I, yes, then I said, yes, even so, even so, if the aspect of the length of the term is such a crucial aspect, then it should have uh, been something that should be at, on the table, even at that level. That, that, that is what I meant. But Commissioner Mbofu makes a point that uh, we may appoint someone who has 12 years to go. Yes. And uh, in three months' time, we realize this person was a, a terrible mistake. 
an impression wants to be created here that we are going to put our heads on our, our hands on our head. Is that not wrong? Because if we realize in three months' time, six months' time, one year's time, five years' time, that we have appointed the wrong person, I don't know what's the wrong person. Are there no institutional mechanism to self-correct? Um, thinking of the CAF, uh, Commissioner Malema, um, you 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 you'd probably have have seen in the Judicial uh, Service Act under the the disciplinary processes there um, that. Um, it is not everything that can lead to getting rid of a judicial officer. So uh, I think it is at that level, perhaps, that uh, that Commissioner Mpofu would be raising uh, raising this. Um, um, at the level of leadership, sometimes you may not reach a point where you say we must short of short short of for a, a, a voting process for example you know you you may not be able to reach a level at which you say let us get rid, rid of that uh, that judge and you know how in south africa and in most countries i believe you get rid uh, of judges is through an impeachment uh, Process. So there are certain, there may be certain shortcomings with regard to the level of leadership, which may fall far short of getting to 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 that sort of level. No, I agree, Justice. All I want is South Africans to be assured whether those things get to be applied or not is something else, but. In our judiciary, if a terrible mistake has been committed in the appointment of the judge, there are institutional mechanisms to correct that. It's, it's not a, a hopeless situation that uh, uh, we are stuck for 12 years as if there is no mechanism. Uh, because I earlier said, I don't know what will be such a terrible mistake. Uh, that will all be like in six months. Yo, this was a horrible mistake. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to imagine that. But if that happens, there are institutional mechanisms to self-correct. Like you said, they might take long or all of that. It's okay. But we agree that there are institutional mechanisms where we can intervene if there is a, a terrible mistake with a judge appointed by this August House? Yeah, yes, yes, uh, Commissioner. Um, it is this, uh, this body that is, besides the recommendations that it makes in terms of uh, the, the Constitution, um, it is also the body that is also tasked with advising on matters that pertain to the judiciary. I guess in that context, in that context, it may maybe raise certain issues with the judiciary as a body because a chief justice is not the judiciary as a whole. So if an issue is about the judiciary, then this body may raise that with the judiciary as a collective, exactly on the basis that aside of recommendations on appointments, it also has the mandate to advise on issues pertaining to the judiciary. Of course, if the shortcomings are of a nature that falls within uh, what, a, what the Chief Justice may have to be disciplined on or about, then, then the, 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 that, has to, that has to be done as well. Uh, and no, all I'm saying is that if, okay, let me talk about a chief justice. If a chief justice becomes a horrible mistake, 
Like we once had with some judge there in Pretoria who said it's still to see a black woman who's not raped by their uncles or something like that. A, a chief justice immediately after this, he says something like that. Are the institu despite the, the, still having 12 years, are the institutional mechanism to hold that chief justice accountable and decisive action taken against that chief justice? Or will be stuck with a chief justice who view black African women in the manner I described earlier on? No, 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 uh, uh, Commissioner, you, you do not have to be. You do, the, the, the commission and the country, and the country, does not have to be stuck with, uh, with somebody like that, especially, especially somebody you know, at, with transgressions at the sort of level that you give. Or it may not be transgressions of that nature, but comparable transgressions. The act is there. The Constitution provides for impeachment, and at a certain level, that judicial officer, including a Chief Justice, may have to be or would have to be impeached. They are not above, one, the Constitution that provides for impeachment, and two, the actual processes that are provided for in the Judicial Commission Service Act. A Chief Justice is not above those processes. Now, here we've got a candidate of 12 years, well qualified, well articulated. Uh, okay, let me leave it. I will, I will take it on my turn. Thank you. I, th I thought this was it, <laughs> Commissioner Malema. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Malema. <laughs> Commissioner Mapisa Nagula. Thank you very much, Acting President, and, and thank you, uh, Justice Malanga. Thank you, Commissioner. Justice Malanga, somewhere in your questionnaire I read, the questionnaire which was you were provided with, where you provided answers uh, to the Commission, I read in question number 18, your response which says, the question was, what would you regard as your most significant contribution to the law and the pursuit of justice in South Africa? And your response to that was, and I won't read it, but I'll just cite what you are saying there. Amongst others, you are saying law does not coincide with justice. And, okay, you, you're now talking to a a peasant, somebody who is, who is very raw, and, and there are many others who, may have, who will come across your questionnaire and, and read what you have, how you have responded to the issues raised there. Then you go on to say you use your instinct for what is just, and your instinct motivates you in the exercise of judicial function. Okay. Just clarify that to, yes. to ordin us ordinary South Africans. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you, Commissioner. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a, a nuance, Commissioner, on the first part of what you said uh, you said it, it, the law does not coincide with justice. I, I, if I say so there, then I may, made a mistake and left out a, a word. What I think I said, and if I've not said it, what I meant to say was that law does not always coincide with justice. And then the point I am making about a natural instinct uh, within me and, 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 and which, which I believe guides me in the adjudicative process is an instinct that I feel is motivated by an innate sense of justice within me. 
And I believe that that assists me in those instances where law may not coincide with justice. Not just, I will again use my self-created adjective and say, throw up my hands in a palatial manner and say, that is what the law is. Yes, it is unjust, but because that is what the law is, I am not going to do anything about it. That innate instinct for justice motivates me to say, is all that we can do in these circumstances, why is this piece of law like this? Should it be like this? I will give a live example, a judgment I wrote in the matter of Mukoni. Somebody, I think in Springs, running a small business in town, and she has a lease, and the term for extension comes and the owner of the, the, the shop where she's running this business writes on, on this contract as it is across the face at the top extended for whatever the period of extension was. And the lease agreement had what is called an option to buy. Now, when, but then the owner sold to somebody else. When she, Miss Mukoni, tried to hold the owner to, and these were companies, the seller, owner, and the other company, when she says, no, 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 I want to hold you to this because there is an option here, then they said, there is an old law no, 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 they did, didn't even say old law. There is a legal principle that says if there is no specific indication that you are also an, extending terms of a contract that are not essential terms of a lease agreement, those other or additional terms like an option would be, an option to purchase would be additional. Those additional terms that are not integral to a contract of lease do not get extended. My instinct, my instinctive reaction to that was, uh -uh, it sounds like there's something wrong altogether in this. And I was allocated the judgment in that matter. I sat down, dug down, and I found a 1904, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere there, case you know that some law we get from the Roman Dutch law, from English law, and so on, and it makes up what is called our common law. I found that 1904 case that we imported into South Africa, and that has been followed for all this time. But when I interrogated the judgment, I just did not find the, 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 the principle enunciated there convincing at all. Because it just said, sort of as a matter of legal principle, this is what it should be. And I said, no, 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 no. This is a contract. And with all contracts, you must interpret a contract. And that, should, that is what should determine the outcome. Not a position that is predetermined and which, in my view, is against the ordinary rules of how we deal with contracts. And I upset that old 1904 English legal principle. So the short point I'm making is, I was motivated by, in, in, no, 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 this just does not sound right. This just does not sound just. I hope it explains the point. Uh, and thank you very much. Uh, but, but, but what I must clarify though is, I should not be understood to be saying that just because of this in instinct, I will 
always, always, and at all costs, try to find a way of getting around what the law says no. There will be those instances where the law is unjust and there is simply nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. That's a very interesting one because actually I think maybe at some point you need to educate us. Now you are saying sometimes the law can be unjust. If, if the law is unjust, what do you do? It, it's, it's, a not, it's, a, it's a discussion for another day. Yes, yes, yes. Because at the end of it is that sometimes we become critical yes. of some of the decisions you take. Yes, yes. And when we are critical of your decisions, yes. sometimes it is because we feel yes. that you, the judgments are unjust. And it could be instances such as the one you've just mentioned that sometimes the laws the law, the law yes. is unjust. Yes. Now the <clears throat> the other thing I wanted just just to to raise is it's not a question, it's just to caution. Your that same question sixteen point three and sixteen point four. I noticed that both of them you responded in this manner. You you actually you say your memory fails you. My memory fails me, but one, the one case which I can remember, in the first one, which is 16.3, you cite the case you remember, which is Ndambo versus Minister of Safety and Security. And then 16.4, you cite... Quetta, Quetta, I Quetta. Think, yes. <laughs> I think... If there were cases which were going to be mentioned, such as the ones you have mentioned, I personally would have preferred that you do not even say that, because that, um, the question doesn't say you should list all the questions. Once you have cited the one that I view, yes, I think that that is enough. I think it talks to the matter which was raised earlier on. You are here, whether you like it or not, to market yourself. And, and when we deliberate at the yeah. end of everything, we should be able to say, well, yeah. in, this, in this questionnaire, 16.3 is responded to in this particular manner. I, I would have definitely, I, would, I don't appreciate the, that the, you actually yeah. wrote that. Uh, uh, your yeah, I, I forget, that, does the question say uh, uh, that I remember? How, how, it it I, says, please list cases in which you gave judgment that were unsuccessfully appealed yeah. against. Yeah. Not more than I, ten. I actually think, I actually think, and uh, Commissioner, uh, that I- even on another occasion, I would still answer that question that way, because if I were just to say Quetta on the one, and then the the, the other one on the on the other, uh, what if? Take, take, take what the GCP has done, for example, the extensive exercise it has done, dug into all judgments. Uh, uh, then I just say Quetta on the one question and that one, and then they dig up and say, look at what he's saying, this person is dishonest. We've come up with other decisions where his judgments were, were, were upset, and yet he has not listed them. He gives, he wants to give the impression that this is all that was ever upset by an appellate court. So uh, I was a judge uh, at, uh, at high court level, um, in the, it's as good as uh, the 90s because after that I acted in the Supreme Court of Appeal, the Constitutional Court, and uh, then very shortly uh, also back in Mtata for a very short period. Then I went back to practice and then I came to sit at the apex court. So it would have been, you know, that very limited time years and years ago that the possibility of my judgments being upset on appeal would have been a factor at all. Now that I sit at the apex court, (laughs) no court can upset our judgments. So for me to be categorical, you know, with regard to years and years gone by, it would actually have been an error, Commissioner. So on any other day, I would still respond to that question exactly the way I have. Well, I, 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 hope I I'm, thank I, you. I hope well, I'm clarifying. I've understood, yes. yes, yes. I yes. do want to, I know it, my time is up now. Judge uh, Justice uh, Malanga, would you say South Africa is ready for a Chief Justice who's a woman now? 
I'm, I'm purely raising this, and I know this is a very sensitive yes. matter, very yes. difficult. Yes. Yes. I'm looking at the list of chief justices we've had, Chakalsin, Langa Ngobo, and Judge Mohueng, and, and we are now post our democracy into our fifth chief justice. And I, I would want to raise this. Um, would you say South Africa is ready? And I want your honest answer to it. Thank you. Um, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner, to that, let me say that uh, I know Justice uh, or President Maya, actually, um, very well. I've known her from when we were, we were students. Um, I've known her as a, as a colleague. Um, she is a worthy colleague. She is a worthy lawyer. And uh, now she is a leader at a significant level in the, the, the judiciary. I would be dishonest to this august body if I were ever to try to, to take anything away from what I've just tried to, to highlight about her. Uh, um, that said, I would uh, say um, I, I, I would want to say let me leave the final decision on that issue with this august body but, but clearly and categorically making the um, acknowledgement that I have made and which I do not at all make grudgingly about my colleague President. Thank you very much Justice Madlanga. You've not answered my question but Acting President I leave it at that because I did not ask about the other competitors. My question to you was do you think, is it your view that South Africa is now ready to have a Chief Justice who is a woman. So the question was directed at, refers to the country as you see it right now. Are we ready? And not so much on the candidate, one of the candidates who we are going to interview. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, President. Thank you. Justice Madlanga, do you perhaps uh, need a second to answer directly to the question posed to you by I, Commissioner? I, I do not think I can take it further. Because, uh, I do not think I can take it further. I, 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 I go no further than to say that I leave everything else to, to this august body. Thank you, Justice Madlanga. Let me make a Commissioner. Let me make a follow-up, uh, acting president. Please do. I think by the time we get yeah, to you, I'll you'll have done. exhausted your questions. <laughs> I'll be done because it looks like these questions are coming even before my turn. Um, I, I don't know, uh, Justice Madlanga, if you are doing yourself a uh, justice. Because they are not asking you for an opinion of this body. They are asking you your opinion, saying, do you think South Africa is ready for a female justice? It's not a question directed at, should this body appoint a female justice? That's not the question. Um, and, and I liked the way you came earlier on about the LGBTQ community. What happened to that feminist about LGBT? Now that we are dealing with real stuff, the real character is showing up. Because the same stand you took on LGBTQ plus communities, the same stand we take on women. Because all of them are victims of masculinity and all the isms you were speaking about earlier on. 
it shouldn't be that um, now that you think you are being put at the corner, you compromise that which came across as your fundamental principles because we're going to doubt them. Now, let me ask the question again. Do you think South Africa is ready for a female justice, chief justice? Um, oh, God, I'm very sorry. I'm sorry, commissioners. I have a strange phone, which even if it's off, it is actually off. If I have an alarm, the alarm goes off even if it's off. I, I, I apologize, commissioners. And I don't know how to sort that out. <laughs> Maybe it's alarmed by the question. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this, this you are bell, forgiven. This bell, this, bell, this, this bell, unlike in boxing, boxing is not saving me, Commissioner Maleva. <laughs> and and I had uh, expected this question um, from Commissioner Malema. And I, 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 I know how he, good he is with uh, what uh, the Americans call comebacks. That is, somebody says something and then you clap him. And uh, I had thought that uh, I would say to Commissioner Malema, but of course I was already thinking he would come with a very serious clap. I had thought, uh, Commissioner Malema, I'm actually looking forward to the next elective conference of the EFF, and I want, I want to see Commissioner Malema stepping back and saying, I'm now paving way for a woman commander-in-chief of the EFF. <laughs> Please don't come with, with your characteristic comebacks, Commissioner Malema. <laughs> Commissioner, towards the end of uh, your question, you, you said otherwise you may even doubt the, the, the genuineness of the views uh, that I have expressed. Um, before answering the question, um, um, let me say please don't, and, uh, and, uh, and other commissioners as well. And... Uh, and let me also say that it is not just, you know, talk. Uh, 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 it is there even in my judgments, for example, the Puanya judgment, for example, the Scribante versus Daniels versus Scribante, for example, the Mukoni judgment, where I came to the assistance of a poor, vulnerable woman. Um, so I do leave by those. <clears throat> uh, so whatever happens, it should not be on the basis that you doubt the genuineness of that. Um, maybe let me just say, I, I will accept that. I will accept that. Uh, um, but say I have attempted to put myself forward as a as also a credible candidate and, uh, and leave it to this commission to exercise its mind as to who it con ultimately consider for, for whatever reason, for whatever other reason, I have attempted to do the best I can in that regard. But, uh, but uh, perhaps let me just say I, I accept that. Uh, uh, Justice uh, Madlanga, the, the, we are now looking for a, a Chief Justice. I think we'll later look for a, a CIC of the EFF at that time. <laughs> but for now, we are looking for a Chief Justice. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll enter that debate there's, there's, at that time. There's that coming. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, I'm worried, I'm, and, and I respect to DL. I mean, Dalu will tell you that you are one of the judges that even when you rule against some of us, you do it in such a way that we, 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 we come out of it learned, educated, and appreciating that we might have missed it here or there. I mean, you used to do it very well with uh, Justice uh, Jaftam told is is gone. 
So the two of you, every time you write judgment, even when you disagree with us, you know, it's so educative. It's, there's nothing that you feel personally attacked or anything of that sort. And, and um, you know, a lot of people support women until it comes to them. Yeah. When it's done there, it's okay. You don't come close closer to the office of the CIC, otherwise <laughs> there's going to be a problem. But uh, on every platform, women must be empowered, women this, women that. Is this not an opportune moment where you say, demonstrating practically beyond the issues of judgment where I'm not personally involved or affected by that. There are two parties. I'm not a litigating party. I'm making this judgment for these people there who are before me. This is where I can practically make a demonstration of my commitment even before coming before this body and say to the president, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that you have identified me as one of those people, but I think we need a female now. I mean, 30 years, it's going to be 30 years. There's never been a female chief justice. If anything, the judiciary has performed worse than us, politicians, because we have had a vice president, uh, two of them who were uh, females as a country. But never did we have a chief justice or even a DPD chief justice who was a female for 30 years. Shouldn't we have reached a point where the male judges who always tell us and the justices who always tell us they support gender and all that, turn it to the president and say, you know what? We think now is time we get a female chief justice because we've been theorizing about it. Is this not an opportune moment where all of us who say we support females, irrespective of us being identified as potential candidates, say we think a female uh, can be a chief justice? Because I'm worried, uh, Justice Madlang, you know, apart from you, and you know we know that, apart from you repeatedly saying you leave it to us, you are struggling to say South Africa is ready for a female justice. But in this context, you will have to look at how we perform. Because we are ready, you can't argue that, but it's not coming out of your mouth. And that's what we are going to argue when we meet. That that commitment, that's what makes me now doubt the earlier commitment and the commitment in the judgment. Because a staunch support of this will not struggle to say, we are ready for a, a female a, a, a chief justice. If you were to ask me on the eve of 2024 uh, national elections, where I will be contesting and you say to me, Mr. Malema, don't you think South Africa is ready for a woman president? I will say it's ready. Because South Africa, it is ready for a, a, a woman president. So why should I, I, I be giving a long explanation instead of just coming out clearly and say, we are ready. We have, we have always been ready. We have led by different capable women in the judiciary. Uh, you are even made much better place to cite their names and, and, and say, but in this context, in, irrespective of what I've said, I'm here, I'm available, and let this body take a decision on what needs to happen. But I, I hear, and that's what worries me, acting president, I hear you struggling to commit that South Africa is ready to have a female chief justice. And, and that is really troubling me. I mean, let's leave the fact that there's a candidate who, who contest you or you're contesting each other in this. Because that candidate might come and perform badly and you performed better, we'll still appoint you. But it doesn't rule the fact that South Africa is ready for a female chief justice. It might not be a Judge uh, uh, President Meyer. Okay. And this process might prove that. 
I, I, I accepted the, the proposition, uh, Commissioner Malema. I accepted the proposition. Thank you, Commissioner Malema. And uh, thank you, um, Justice Madlanga, for that uh, direct response, because this is what I was also going to take up with you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Commissioner Muimang, the moment that you released has now come. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Acting uh, President. Uh, good, uh, good uh, evening, uh, Justice Madlanga. Good evening, Commissioner. Just uh, uh, one area that, 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 that I thought uh, I must converse with you, though it, it has three, three uh, sub-branches. <clears throat> uh, the issue of the composition of the of the corn court, uh, uh, as uh, alluded to earlier on, uh, in your uh, response, you, 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 you did indicate uh, the, the lack of appointment of uh, white male judges in the, in the last 12 years. Am I correct on that? It, 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 that was not a point made by me. It was a question posed to me, and it did not say male. It said uh, um, white colleagues on that bench. And it was asked specifically in the context of Section 174.2. And, uh, and then my response was, yes, there is a need for all the various categories of the South African um, populace to feel that the, the various levels of our judiciary uh, belong to them, and to an extent, I believe that uh, that is what Section 174.262 address. Um, yes, of course, then I, 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 I said quite a lot more than just that. Thank you. The, I think the issue of the, of the diversity, uh, it, it, it's a very important matter, and uh, the progress that uh, that the country has made, but we at the level of the of the of, of the Concord and the Superior and the Supreme Court of Appeal. I think uh, that, that progress must be appreciated. Uh, don't you think that uh, we are being too hard on ourselves? Uh, I'll tell you why I'm raising this point. The <clears throat> the uh, the President of, uh, of of the United States of America. Uh, I recently made a proposition that uh, uh, in replacing one of the, the senior judges whose term has come to an end, uh, uh, it is an opportunity for him for the first time to appoint a woman of color in the Supreme Court uh, in America. And uh, they say that it is, uh, it is uh, uh, for the first time in more than 232 years. Uh, that is the context of the mission I'm saying, that are we not being too hard on ourselves? Particularly uh, taking from the point that we have raised around the importance of uh, a person's outlook in terms of approaching uh, the issues of transformation. And as a result thereof, uh, what comes to my mind is uh, the outlook of uh, uh, Chief Justice uh, Arthur Charles Carlson, uh, uh, Justice uh, Alvi Sachs, uh, Justice Didcourt, uh, which uh, clearly to me says that uh, as opposed to, to the United States of America, as a country, uh, we are doing quite well. Hence the question to you is, are we not being too hard 
on ourselves in terms of the transformation project on the judiciary. Thank you. I would uh, say yes, we have done well, but uh, I, I will not go back on the the, the concession I made uh, um, to 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 the question put to me by by Commissioner Malema. Uh, I would say we we, we we have done far better because unlike uh, the 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 United States of America in our apex court we we have a number of, uh, of, 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 of women colleagues. Thank you. The, 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 the second leg of, 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 of my question on the composition, uh, the issue of the term, uh, I know you have uh, uh, canvassed your views on the issue of the term, uh, but really with regard to whether it is four years or three years or is it two years, that is, that, the reason why I'm raising this point, just allow me to put my proposition yes, forward. Yeah. Uh, Justice Madanga. Uh, one of the, the angle uh, that, 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 that is also uh, in the public domain uh, around this process is uh, the uh, the uh, the role of the judiciary uh, in the current administration. Uh, <clears throat> a concern is raised around uh, the, the sixth administration appointing judges in the last remaining years of the sixth administration. Uh, a point of, of emphasis being raised to say, if you appoint, if the sixth administration appoint judges when it turns, uh, comes to an end, <clears throat> uh, these judges that are appointed by the sixth administration, cut the seventh administration, will they not exert influence in the new administration and uh, uh, exerting influence on two areas? Uh, the, 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 the first one is uh, uh, in the seventh administration, uh, a potential of, uh, of, of, of these judges uh, perpetuating the understanding of the old thinking of the current sixth administration in the seventh administration on key matters of public interest. The, the second point uh, is the the, the, the temptation of uh, these judges that are appointed by the sixth administration in the seventh administration uh, using that opportunity to probably correct some of the doctrine uh, that uh, they might not have uh, done in the sixth administration. And uh, this is where an area of judicial activism comes from. So I want to get a uh, your views on that. Um, Commissioner, I, I do not understand the role of the judiciary to be about uh, either perpetuating uh, this, the policy of this administration or the policy of the, the, the other administration. The Constitution it's itself, in so many words, says that judges are subject to the Constitution and the law. So judges, regardless of the administration that is in power, are constitutionally obliged to decide cases in accordance with what the Constitution and the law says, whatever the administration. Uh, indeed, uh, I must state the obvious, which is even the oath of office that we take says that is what we must do, apply the law in accordance with the Constitution and the law 
and we must do so impartially and everything else. So if the law has been changed by another administration through acceptable legal uh, processes and that is the existing law, there is no constitutional challenge against it, that is the law that we will apply. If there is a constitutional challenge, it is well grounded, we will invalidate the law regardless of the, the, the administration that put it up. Uh, I believe that that should also deal with your second question about any temptations. We, 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 we swear allegiance to the Constitution and the law and uh, I do not think any temptations would come into the equation. Thank you, thank you, Justice Madlanga. Uh, maybe just an elaboration, but it won't uh, uh, necessitate your, your response. Uh, this uh, area that I, that, 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 that I put uh, to, to you uh, has been a concern even in, the, in, in, in America. Uh, the judicial process, they say during, uh, during uh, Obama's uh, administration, uh, he had the same challenge, and they said that challenge was also faced by uh, by Nixon's administration uh, during, 1970, during 1969 and 1971, and Roosevelt faced the same uh, in 1937. Uh, of course, mindful of the fact that, that uh, relatively our constitutional democracy is uh, is fairly new. Uh, there is a likelihood that maybe in future uh, that could be a possibility. Uh, just the last point, just the last point now, so, so that when you when you raise, when you respond, uh, at least uh, you also respond to my last question. Uh, the the judgment that you have referred to uh, as one as one of your breaking breaking ground, the new nation movement. Uh, as per the judgment, the, the bill is before Parliament. But what uh, uh, comes to my mind uh, in terms of the thrust of the judgment, which says uh, uh, the route to Parliament and legislature uh, cannot only be through political party, but also through uh, individuals and independent. Just uh, educate to me on that aspect. Uh, at the local, at the local level, local government level, mm. when an independent or uh, a what candidate of a political party uh, passes on, a vacancy is declared, and uh, by-election uh, takes place. Now, at the at the legislature level and also at the parliament level, when that individual or an independent uh, passes away, a vacancy will be declared. Uh, but uh, I don't get a sense in terms of uh, how will that independent fill that vacancy because uh, he would have passed on. Maybe if you can just uh, educate me on that aspect. Thank you. Uh, uh, happily, happily, Commissioner, and uh, this is by no means ducking your question. Happily, all that I had to grapple with was an interpretative uh, process. If, uh, I mean, you're referring to the, 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 the Roosevelt and uh, Obama and so on administrations in the context of what happens in the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court, I would imagine that uh, you, you have actually read my judgment. Uh, if you are, you know, you have that kind of interest, you would have had an interest to read the judgment. If uh, you will see in that judgment how extensively I deal with various sections of the Constitution itself, so my judgment turns on an interpretation of the. I actually start from section one, the founding uh, provisions of the, and I traverse quite a large part of the constitution into the hundreds you know of sections section maybe 200 and something and so on 
a number. So my judgment turns on an interpretative exercise of the Constitution. And I say not to have this is unconstitutional. And what do I then do with the agreement of the majority of my, my colleagues? I say, but we suspend this and we send it to Parliament. It is for parliamentarians to then see what they do with that vacancy. It is not for the court. All that I had to do was to say, but this one act that is before me now is unconstitutional. How it gets corrected, we throw it to parliament. That's their terrain. Otherwise, I, as part of the court, will be straying into their terrain. Separation of powers does not allow that. Thank you, Justice Malaga. Thank, 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 thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Moima. Commissioner Lucas. Thank you very much, Chairperson, uh, Acting President. Now, a lot has been said about the issues that I would love to went in, like the delays and the issues of women. And uh, even about the three and a half years. Now, my question is about the issue of, I think we extensively spoke about the issue of delays in the court system and then about the principle of justice, delayed is justice denied. But even yourself, Justice Matlanga, said that you think you are working very hard in the Constitutional Court. My question to you as a candidate that aspire to become the Chief Justice. Oh, okay, I wanted to tell you about the other question that I had before I come to my question. So one of my questions was practically, besides the theory that you wrote about, what have you done to empower women? But I think by now I, you don't need to respond to that one. We have, I, I have done a lot. <laughs> we, have, we have passed that one. No, yeah, but I, I have done a lot. But, but the, yes. I, the issue is that you have done a lot, yes, in the courts and in your theory. But in terms of making sure that you empower women in the communities to understand how they can use the courts for justice to be done to them, it's, that is exactly what the context of my question okay. would have been. So I want to go further and ask, how are we going to, if you are appointed as a Chief Justice, how are you going to make sure that you have a community that is more justice savvy, that understand better how they can utilize judiciary for a better dispensation for themselves? That is the first, but I want to ask and sit back. And also, how will you work on building a cadre of hardworking but also smartworking judicial officials? to ensure that really our people get justice and they feel and they see justice to be done to themselves. That will be my questions. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, with regard to the issues of uh, communities and uh, and uh, um, access to justice. I would say that uh, there has to be a collective effort on, on, on these uh, issues. Um, for example, can't the judiciary partner with, uh, say, because, for example, parliamentarians do constituency work. Um, some of the parliamentarians are in uh, the Justice Committee. In the collective effort, can't they too just assist in that uh, the aspect of you know, the educative aspect. Uh, 
this is not to pass the buck. I'm just saying it may have to be an effort that is much, much wider than focusing on one aspect, just the judiciary. But yes, the judiciary may also play a role in that educative uh, process. Um, speeches, papers, but it is not practical for the judiciary to go out to several uh, communities. It does not have that same kind of outreach. Uh, so I think it would be unrealistic for me sitting here to seriously make make promises with regard to what can be done, but something can certainly be done with regard to some forms of outreach, like I say, maybe addresses, um, lectures, and so on. But the best practical way would be more than just the judiciary being involved, but a broader approach, a collective approach, and I think that that broader or collective approach would uh, better reach the the communities. Um, a cater of uh, hard working judicial officers. Um, you are able to. You can work hard, but if the situation or the circumstance you, you, you find yourself in does not uh, permit you to achieve the sort of outcomes that you achieve, the hard work may take you this far and not that far. Um, an example is what I said, for example, about the delays at the, the Constitutional Court, uh, which I said were a function of, I identified at least two examples, um, the deluge of new applications and also just one example of our, our processes on which I said we now have solutions. So. To have a cadre of judicial office officers that work hard, but I would also emphasize, but also have the desired outcomes, or I are able to bring about the desired outcomes, I would say one would have to, to focus on the working conditions, on problems, on bottlenecks, and uh, try as hard as possible to solve those that will then enhance the working environment and improve on outcomes. Now, I, I ask these questions to someone that aspired to be the Chief Justice, and I ask these questions to you if you would have been the Chief Justice. But I just want to mention an example of what I think is not smart working. What is not what? Smart working. You are called to the court. You get a, a, a letter that says you must be there at nine. Nine o'clock you arrive at the court. It is the time when the officials in the court begin to prepare themselves for your case which means the only time that you will be able to appear in front of a magistrate is possibly 11 or 12 o'clock. Sometimes people sit there up until 4 o'clock, the court closed, no one inform people that your case will not be in front of us today. So what I'm saying is how, the, what I'm saying is that attitude or that ethics 
that, that need to be built for judicial officials to understand that you must also put in effort or you must also plan better to be able to serve communities better. I mean, as parliamentarian, you justly said that we are representing communities and that is why we are here where we are. As parliament, we were, during lockdown, able for two years to do a review across the country, all people. And that is why I'm speaking about uh, uh, this thing, public uh, education and public involvement. Because if you work smart you, and you plan properly, you will be able to do all these things. I don't want general response. I want the response of someone that they've got a vision as to how we are going to make sure that what we are supposed to be doing, it is actually accessible to our people out there. So that is, why, that is why on some of the things I say, don't respond. But on, on other things I say, build a cadre that they've got ethic of service delivery and they'd want to make sure that they educate our communities. Because even through the process in the court, you can educate people. But sometimes you go to court, you don't understand even where you must go, you don't even know what to do. Uh, particularly some of us never went to court in our life when we were younger. Now that we are older, sometimes we, we clap people and we are being taken to court. <laughs> And then you don't even know what to do. I'm just mentioning it. Thank you. Uh, co yeah, co Commissioner, thank you. Um, I, I would like to respond. Uh, and thank you very much that you, you actually gave a concrete uh, example because when a, you know, a question is asked in broad terms like that, it may be difficult for you to, 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 to grapple, with, you grapple with it uh, in, in practical terms as well. Um, let me... Uh, I like responding by making reference to myself. Let me do that here as well. When I was a high court judge and therefore sat all by myself, except in those instances where I would be part of a panel on appeal, uh, court started at 10 then, not even the 9 o'clock that you are referring to, the high court. Um, if at something like three minutes to ten, the court orderly had not come to fetch me, I would walk out of my office, go straight to the courtroom, enter without that court rise and all that announcement, and go and sit down. And everybody would jump and run around, and, and I would not get out until everybody got organized and uh, started doing something or began with the business of the day. Where am I going with that? Um, if that is how my own makeup is, as a Chief Justice, this is something that I would not only be willing to, but that I would actually sell and I would go to the right levels of the, the judiciary to, to, to make sure that there is the kind of cadre that you are talking about, uh, Commissioner. And this would come naturally in my case. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lucas. Commissioner Breitenbach. Thank you um, very much, Acting President. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, Justice Matanga. Yes, yes, Commissioner. Oh. Uh, you, you must be really tired having uh, very. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was part of this body when we when we subjected Chief Justice Mohueng Mohueng to two days of this. So maybe maybe I should not complain. <laughs> My sympathy for you is just evaporated. Uh, <laughs> 
So, uh, Justice Malaga, your, your views on access to justice are, are terribly exciting, um, and I support them 100%. And uh, um, there are members of the Portfolio Committee on Justice on this body, and uh, the chairperson, in fact, of the Portfolio Committee is there with you, and the minister is here with you. So I think uh, between us, we can actually try and do something about that. I think it's a worthwhile project. Thank you. Uh, to understand. Um, one of the consequences of questioning you so late in the day is, of course, not sure if it's an advantage or disadvantage, is, of course, that most of the questions have been traversed. Uh, and I'm a great admirer of brevity, and so I will not uh, re-ask any of the questions that have been asked. Yes. Uh, what I do, what I would like to uh, uh, take up with you is, is, if you are appointed... How do you propose to properly and efficiently uh, close the, the gap between the Superior Court Judiciary and the Lower Court Magistracy in order to promote unity, mutual respect and an, an efficient uh, delivery of justice uh, within the component of the judiciary? Thank um, you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, even though I, 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 I stated it very, very briefly, it is one of those issues that I want to, to I would if appointed, I would focus on. Um, I, 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 I touch on the fact that uh, the, the two main points that I've been able to, to identify, but uh, there's certainly probably more, um, um, that uh, the magistracy is raising are the question of um, they uh, a move from the Department of Justice one, and then the question of what has been referred to as uh, integration. <clears throat> um, I I am for I am for 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 for, for the idea of of of, of, of uh, integration in the sense that we, we should be one judiciary in the true sense, but. That can not mean uh, that we will not have the levels that we have, because we we do have the magistracy, which itself is at two levels. Those will continue to be realities, and also the appointment processes. Uh, uh, it, it may perhaps not be practical to to use the same body. Imagine you, you, there are more vacancies in the magistracy and, uh, and, and this body, if it were one, to be one body doing all the appointments, there would be nothing that you would ever do. You would be coming here, maybe at one session you are appointing many magistrates and many judges and then because there are vacancies all the time, this would probably probably be all that you would ever be able to um, to do. Um, so integration, yes. One umbrella, yes. But all of these to be done with a recognition of the reality that there are different levels and coming up with practical ways of how, how to, to, to to address or to work with the reality of those two differences, uh, uh, different levels, but under one uh, one umbrella, one judiciary. Um, yeah, I, I would leave it at that, uh, Commissioner. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Badenbach, Commissioner Barnett. Thank you, Acting President. Good evening, uh, Justice Malanga. Good, good evening, Commissioner. Uh, Justice Malanga, my question relates to access to justice and actually in an interesting way latches on to the um, question of uh, a few of the commissioners that are just going before me. Um, access to justice and specifically the small claims court. Now, if one, uh, you spoke about courts down to the magistrate's court level at district level, I think that was the lowest I've heard you speak uh, so far. 
<laughs> but, but if one now um, thinks about Section 165 of the Constitution, which gives the responsibility to the Chief Justice over the judicial function of all courts, I'm going to highlight the all courts aspect of it, um, this includes what Section 166E refers to as any other court that is other than higher and magistrates' courts. So we're talking really about courts closer to the communities even than, than those that you refer to. How do you see the role of Chief Justice, uh, you know, if any at all, in, for example, the small claims court where many citizens get access to justice? In fact, at the time that I'm speaking to you now, there's probably some um, small claims courts functioning at the moment with people coming from work and then attending courts and so on, and, and where many lawyers sit as commissioners. So how do you see uh, your role? What's, do you have a vision for that as well? Um, because uh, uh, even though it, this was uh, years back, this is something that I have actually seen work. And, uh, and I, when I say years back, it, it really is years back. This is when I was doing pupillage and uh, uh, the advocate I was doing pupillage under um, was a, a, a commissioner in a small claims court. So he used to go there. And uh, I would go with him in the evenings after work, and I would just sit at the back. And uh, I, I, in practical terms, I actually saw how well the system works. Um, and, and of course, then the, the, the monetary ju jurisdiction was uh, quite low. It still is low even now, but it is much, much better now. And uh, you are quite right to say that uh, that is a system that works with access of justice. Um, and uh, I recently had occasion to actually go through the act and it, it makes the process quite accessible. It does away with the clutter or formal uh, processes and so on. It, it, it's so easy, in fact, that a non-lawyer who can read the act can be able to start their own case, lodge it with a small claims court, and be able to to run with it. But of course, with uh, with people who who, who cannot. Uh, read and be able to do it themselves, um, um, efforts would have to be made to, 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 to educate people about, uh, about it. It is, I agree with you, a very useful access to court, uh, to court tool. It would just have to be used optimally. Are you not muted, Commissioner? Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, the, the, I think the initial act was something like, you know, 36 years ago, and there's been some amendments being um, worked on and so on. But, uh, what, uh, you know, what I actually want to hear on is your vision, and to, is there any um, vision or thoughts on integration of this part of the court into the greater, wider court structure of South Africa? Because... Uh, you know, it, otherwise it's sort of an, an, an excluded side branch, which is not really pulled in under the what the constitution really seems to intend. Mm. Um, I, I would say that as long as the idea of integration does not bring within that court the sort of traditions that we know to exist within the the, the other components of our court system. So if in essence it stays the same, I mean the very idea that it has been sold to practitioners to participate in it as commissioners free of charge is in, in itself quite a benefit to the poor and the vulnerable who have ready access to court. So as long as the idea of integration will not unfortunately bring some of the problems that makes, or I'm sorry, that make the rest of our court system inaccessible, I, I would have uh, no, no problems 
with that idea but as to what the actual integration would entail i i, I will not sitting here claim to to have any concrete ideas on it but what i definitely do have ideas on the the current system in terms of you know its accessibility that we should protect thank you um my second question i'll leave due to the time constraints but i'd like to move on to uh, to a third aspect and uh possibly the last thing that i would deal with today and that is i see in paragraph 21 of your application that you also um uh, function as a lessor of properties whether directly or indirectly um so rental properties now um and then i i noticed in your judgment in daniel this is uh, daniel this is scribante where you draw the you where you um you know extend the esta legislation and rights of the occupant of a property to be able to make changes where even against the wills of or against the will or the wishes of whoever owns the property <laughs> so i was just wondering in your in your context as a a lessor um you know you know some of the contracts as a standard lease term would be not to not to allow someone to make changes to a property without the uh owner consenting so um do you think that this type of judgment opens the way for a a, a overall or rethinking of that clause on, on on a constitutional level i no i And think i think i, I think that the, the 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 a crucial aspect of my judgment which was centered on dignity the right to dignity uh, was the fact that it was in the context of esther this is somebody who is entitled to live here on this farm in terms of an act of parliament that seeks to 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 address in fact in a sense esther is at the 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 heart of um deprivation you will have seen in that judgment i actually open with the words of uh, mr ngosi who says and i'm paraphrasing and summarizing seriously but the substance of what he says is without land we are nothing so that was the context in and and then you will see i go at length uh into the history of uh, land dispossession in the in the country so i think what i say in that judgment should be viewed in the context of what it was about this poor lady is on this piece of land she's not asking to break down walls uh, take off the roof you know uh, all she was asking was i want to be able at night if i want water and i've forgotten to fill up my bucket i don't want if i want to drink to go outside i want to have a tap inside this house i want to replace this window i want to level the floors in this all she wa- and and you should bear in mind in that case commissioner that the respondents the farm manager and the farm owner did not dispute what she said she wanted and she wanted to do it out of her own pocket but they just said no we will have none of that and i said effectively this makes nonsense of esther this makes nonsense of a constitutional or a constitutionally guaranteed right that she enjoys and that goes to the question of dignity and i said based on that she is entitled to do what she said she wanted to do out of her pocket even if the owner did not give permission thank thank you very much uh, that's those are my questions thank, thank you thank you thank you commissioner thank you very much thank you commissioner banat
Commissioner Malema. Uh, thank you, Acting uh, President uh, Justice Madlanga. I just want to ask, I, I know you, you dealt with that in your questionnaire, of going to the bench and going back to be an advocate. I, I, I find it very strange. Uh, please take us through. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner, I had... Uh, gone to the bench or come to the bench uh, fairly young. Well, I may be criticized maybe at the level of, well, that was not a sound judgment on my part. And if somebody says so, uh, maybe I will not try to argue against that. I came to the bench uh, fairly young. At the time I did, I was the youngest judge in South Africa. I was uh, 34. Uh, some may say 34 is old. <laughs> um, I had a young family, um, and you know what uh, that uh, entails in terms of uh, expenses and so on and so on. Um, and after about five years, uh, I just uh, could no longer. And I was, I was uh, quite public about this. I was never even secretive about it. Uh, it was not, uh, you know, the sort of uh, silent, uh, resigned for what? What was the term that's usually that's normally used? Personal reason or something like that. Um, f fine, I did not make a public statement, but I was open about it. Um, the minute I felt no, I ca can no longer stand it, I went to, I was acting at the Constitutional Court at the time. I went to President Shaskalsin. I explained everything to him. I was open with him. I didn't just say personal reasons. No, I'm, I'm out. And then I made an appointment with um, the, the minister then was uh, Minister Penwell Maduna. I also um, spoke to him and fully explained and gave him the same facts that I've just given to you now. Uh, both of them did uh, try to, 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 dis, to, to, to say, uh, no, 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 please don't. And uh, I mean, I understood where they were coming from, but uh, unfortunately, Commissioner, um, the reality was I just could no longer go on. It was... Uh, to cut a long story short, those, uh, unfortunately, and, and, and I left for not, for, for, it was not for any lack of love for the job. I still liked what I was doing. I would have stayed on, and, but, but it just became impossible. And uh, rather than reach a point where it would, uh, I'm not saying I would have done anything improper, but, you know, it could have reached a, a point where it just becomes, uh, you know, um, horrible for me in the sense that there's the judge uh, getting sequestrated or something like that. Those, those were the facts, uh, Commissioner. Why did you come back? Um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for <laughs> the laughter. <laughs> um, I still remember the dates, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Malema. Um, I was on holiday in December, uh, you know, late December after Christmas, uh, late 20s, uh, yeah, close to the end of the month, and I was called by, I, 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 I hope my colleagues will not uh, feel embarrassed about me revealing this. And I was called by uh, the acting Chief Justice, um, he was still uh, the judge president of the labor court, but he had uh, <clears throat> acted at the constitutional court. And uh, he, 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 he said he, he, there was something he wanted to talk to me about. Uh, and I said, well, fortunately I am, I was on holiday in Durban. I said, I am in Durban, and he came to me to see me. It was on the 1st of uh, January 2012. I think, and he broached the subject with me and, uh, and said, haven't your circumstances changed now? And even before I left, he had been wanting me to go to act at the Labour Appeal Court. He was really sitting on me. So that's the level at which he, he, he respected me as a colleague and, a, and as a judge. 
And so he, he, he said, as a colleague who knew me and who respected me, um, um, did I not think that it was now time to come and rejoin them as, uh, as colleagues on the bench? And then on the 18th of February, uh, and with him having called me a few days before, I met my colleague whom you mentioned, uh, Justice Jafta. He also asked to, 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 to meet me. I met him on the 18th of uh, February that same year, and, and he too approached uh, the same subject. Um, I might mention that other colleagues as well, a friend of mine who is a judge in Port Elizabeth, Judge Mandela Makaula, had been talking about the same thing quite a number of times. But you know how sometimes you treat friends. I never took my close, close, close friend. I mean, he comes from my hometown, grew up as a young Bafana together. I, I would just tell him to, yeah, get off. So I started, uh, I then started thinking uh, about it uh, quite seriously, Commissioner, and, uh, and I think that did weigh heavily with me. All right, we come out there. This has been an incredibly long day um, for Judge Mbuiseli Madlanga, who is uh, the first in the hot seat. Uh, there are four judges that are going to be uh, put through the same incredible uh, lengthy process uh, where they are just asked uh, very deep uh, questions. And each will be given a day that's between now and Friday. And uh, talking about his history, uh, one of the youngest judges at the time, 34, when he was appointed a judge. He served on various um, judges, uh, the competitions court, uh, the Supreme Court, and then mainly he's been at the Constitutional Court uh, since uh, 2013, if I'm correct. So, mm. so that issue coming up again, Bungiwe, about whether they should choose him or Justice Zondo, who have a limited time because there is a 12-year limit and they can then. only serve for 12 <laughs> years, they, then it's cut off, um, but, but that was quite a debate. It really was, Francis, and even that moment when he was asked if it's time for a female <laughs> chief justice, you, you, you were seeing that he's trying so hard to be as diplomatic as yes. possible to say, hey, I'm still in the race. But I think for me, one of the things watching Justice Matlana throughout the day has been his calm demeanor, I must say, huh. um, you know, watching him all these hours, but also, you know, the, the part when in the morning he was expecting explaining the seniority part of it, saying that I have gone through, um, you know, the ranks and at the same time, I have also found myself with some of my colleagues trusting me with their drafts judgments and they've come to me to ask me for their opinions and all of that, which shows that I also do have some kind of influence on my colleagues and I do have the respect of my colleagues because that has been one of the issues, uh, Francis, to say that seniority and actually being um, in that position is going yeah. to require a lot of leadership and, and it came up a lot uh, the amount of time left so three years six months uh, but he was for, for quite a lengthy time justifying why that is long enough um, because some of the the commissioners saying you don't want someone to come in and then we have to change things mm. and I, I like that part talking about how long it would take to implement change mm. um, and then mm. implement um, he called the templates processes that could be continued into the future and he said three years, six months uh, is time enough mm. in summary. Yeah. And you know, Francis, one of the things for me that gave me an indication of what we must, we, we might expect when uh, the acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo takes the hot seat on Friday was around the handling of the media by uh, justices, especially when you look at the Chief Justice. And one of the questions uh, this morning was the fact that, um, you know, how do you handle the relationship? with the media and he was talking about the fact that you know this particular relationship is constitutional in nature you're seeing some people choosing to go via the media to attack or in fact not to attack to criticize the judiciary saying that we are not above reproach but also people should not do it in such a way that it undermines the work that we do yeah. and then this afternoon interestingly enough he then faces a question that asks him about 
judges and justices holding press conferences. What, do, what, what does he say mm -hmm. about that? And that kind of, for me, alludes to the fact that the acting Chief Justice may just be asked about that press conference <laughs> that he decided to have at the back of that article. And no doubt the, the woman issue uh, will come up again. We were having our own debate about this question in the first place. Is South Africa ready for a female Chief Justice? Um, and tomorrow, Justice Meyer, who uh, he said today was incredibly competent, uh, basically uh, voting for her but not taking himself out of the running mm -hmm. um, for her because she's a woman, as uh, was suggested at some point uh, by Julius Malema. Uh, but no doubt this will be asked of, of all of them, I'm, I'm sure. And I'm interested to see, Francis, if that ruling that uh, Justice Meyer made on the 31st, um, a ruling against um, public protector Busisu of Kubana's application for reconsideration when it comes to the dismissal of her SARS rogue unit um, appeal, I wonder if it'll come up tomorrow and also the fact that she comes from a, a, a law court and has never held yeah. a permanent position in the you know the, the apex court if that at all is going to come into play and looking at how she might fare with her colleagues all right well let's uh, wrap it up there I mean this was meant to go on until 5 30 uh, it was extended because everybody needs a turn to ask their, their questions uh, tomorrow it should be an even shorter process because they're starting earlier uh, but perhaps it will extend even some talk at the end there about whether he could uh, continue. It's, it's really been a long